I was wrong about Battlefront 2 snipers. So over the past few weeks, I've made a few videos about the specialist class in Battlefront 2. I tested the cycle rifle, decided it was underpowered compared to the old version, the old Tuscan Raider rifle they used to shoot at kids in pod races. You know the one, I've made the joke before. And then I played with the NT242, the sniper that deals the highest amount of damage in Battlefront 2. I thought this was the best sniper. It's a guaranteed headshot kill against regular infantry classes. But lots of you comment on the video, thanks for that, with another suggestion of a weapon I overlooked, the A280 CFE. This weapon has a high rate of fire to begin with, but you can unlock a burst fire mode to enhance its rate of fire even further, turning it into a beast. Did not realize this was as powerful as it is until I used it. It's pretty crazy. Anyway, hey everyone, it's Andrew, and today I want to take another in-depth look at the specialist class, and especially the A280 CFE, and figure out why I was wrong about this class. I made a judgment that the specialist is still weaker than all the other classes because Battlefront 2's maps are more focused on mid to close range combat, and snipers of course are mostly for long range. The A280 CFE changes this, but not completely, so I'm going to take a look at this rifle, compare it to the others, and also look at some more of the specialist star cards. I think I might have been wrong about some of these also, but I'm not discrediting what I said in those previous videos, I still agree with most most of what I said, but now that I've used this class more, I have a deeper understanding of how to use it. And I know I'm late to the party on all this, none of this apart from the cycle rifle is new content in the game, but Battlefront 2 is continuing to evolve with new maps and supremacy and co-op game modes, which repurposes the weapons and makes me look for new ways to play and win. I love the fact that even two and a bit years after release, I'm still finding ways of making the game feel fresh. Just by mixing up my classes and the weapon attachments I use. My fingers are still crossed that we get more new weapons in the coming months. That would be amazing. Also, everything I talk about in this video is about the average Battlefront 2 player, not some kill streak 360 no scope MLG player. You know I don't play that way. You know that's not how I roll. So the A280 CFE is a sniper version of the regular A280 blaster rifle. This is one of the classic Rebel Alliance weapons, first appearing in Empire Strikes Back on Hoth when the Rebels were crushed. That's how good this gun was. The Rebels were armed with A280s, and the Empire were armed with giant armored walking donkey killing machines. They didn't really get much of a chance to shine. Just as the base weapon, the A280 CFE has the highest rate of fire of all snipers in the game, at 320 rounds per minute. For a sniper rifle, th that's pretty fast. Just to give you an idea, the NT242 has a fire rate of 80 rounds per minute. The cycle rifle is around 180 rounds per minute, so 320 for this thing, it's pretty quick. And even though it's weaker and deals less damage, the A280 CFE can fire 15 shots before it needs to cool down. The NT can only fire three. But this setup isn't really where you get the most out of this weapon. To get this thing's full potential, you want to unlock and equip the Burst Fire mod. You unlock this with 75 kills using this weapon, and this changes the weapon dramatically. The A280 CFE now fires three rounds per burst. The rate of fire is 140 bursts per minute. And with this type of speed, the sniper is capable of dealing some serious damage. Now, I know that was a lot of numbers, I'm sorry about that. Between A280 and 320 and NT242, I wonder if there are reasons all the weapons in Star Wars have the numbers they do. Like, was there an NT241? Interesting questions. So overall, the CFE can fire more shots before it needs to cool down than other snipers, and obviously deals less damage than other snipers, but has a much higher rate of fire, with the burst mode further improving this. Gives you the ability to take out heavies in one burst if you aim for the head, Otherwise, it's two to three bursts for a kill. And at range, this weapon does have a significant drop off, but for me personally, it wasn't enough to make it feel useless. I had this one match of co op on Kessel where all the enemy AI was spawning out of the same couple of tunnels. So I'd overheat my sniper, activate the yellow cooldown zone, and for a good 10 or 15 seconds, this thing was unstoppable. Absolutely brutal taking down enemy after enemy. But this is co op with AI bots very different to playing
playing online against other human players, which I'll talk more about. One thing I didn't properly test with the other snipers was how they play online in a game of supremacy. So with this one, I jumped into a game on Takadana and overall, I found it to be pretty decent. Against other classes in 1v1s, I felt I was mainly 50-50 and it was down to me just hitting my shots, which it should be. Obviously, things got more difficult against reinforcements with more health and was finding I was just being beaten by better weapons, buffer characters and heroes. And moving up into the capital ships was also a real challenge just because there's so much grenade spam and chaos when you're in this stage of the map. But I definitely feel I had some success shooting enemies at distance and also quickly bursting enemies up close. I concluded that the A280 CFE is definitely a powerful weapon with burst mode, but is it still a sniper? There are people who argue that using just the regular A280 or the EL16 HFE, both of which are assault weapons, are better choices over the CFE. Both these weapons have an improved range attachment, which prevents damage drop off of the weapon over distance, which basically turns them into sniper rifles. It's funny, the assault class has two weapons you can turn into snipers, and the specialist has this, which turns into an assault rifle. You know, they swap. Swap, swap and rolls. With the burst fire attachment, the A280 CFE is much more suited to mid-range combat and even works well using hip fire at close range. Which leads me again to assess the map design of Battlefront 2. Like I talked about in my previous specialist video, Battlefront 2's maps are primarily focused on mid to close range combat, as opposed to Battlefront 1, which were focused on mid to long range. So in many ways, the A280 CFE is the perfect Battlefront 2 weapon Weapon, and the burst mode was specifically designed to excel in this game. Going back to playing online in Supremacy, I also took the NT242 for a spin and found this much harder to play with. Just because the match can be so chaotic with enemies coming from all directions, I found I was getting into too many close range confrontations, which were not by choice, it just kept happening because the map I was playing on was so tight, constantly felt cramped using the sniper. But I did end up doing okay, but it was frustrating being defeated time and time again by weapons much more suited to mid to close range combat. And yes, I did get a few hip fire kills, but I'm not that good. No MLG Pro 360 no scope game. And you know, you've never been that, never wanna be that. It's not who I am, it's not how I roll. Now, there are a few things I've noticed have changed about the specialist class over the past couple of years. First of all, I swore I remember the specialist having less health than all other classes originally, and I was right. The specialist got a health buff in the Han Solo season, increasing health from 100 to 150. Now the same as the assault and officer, which definitely improved the class and made them more even and competitive with the other classes. Before that, it was much easier to get killed as the specialist, but I also remembered that the stinger pistol was nerfed. It no longer continues to deal damage if you die after you've fired it, and if the player affected by the stinger pistol gets a kill while taking damage, it stops them from taking any more damage. The damage no longer stacks. This changed back in October 2019, which I think really sucks because for a class I think already has a tough time with weapons not being powerful enough or usable in certain situations at certain ranges, this was one of the class's better assets, having the Stinger Pistol. I knew something felt different when I was using it over the past few weeks. Honestly, now that I'm remembering this, I'm super disappointed. Come on, it's the Stinger Pistol. Now it feels like a pea shooter or a potato gun, I don't know, some type of vegetable based weapon. So instead of using the Stinger Pistol, I've been using the Improved Shock Grenade, which I was completely wrong about in my last video. This star card is great for throwing into a large group of enemies or at a choke point and will hinder enemies movement while also dealing damage. And yes, it doesn't immediately kill an enemy, which is what I was getting at in my last video. It's underpowered compared to a regular grenade or a thermal detonator. But I found it works great with the A280 CFE because it will slow down a group of enemies for you to pick off with your bursts. I also found it really annoying when an enemy threw this and I got caught in it. Really slows down your movement and leaves you vulnerable for a few seconds. Not as bad as disruption for Battlefront 1 though. Man, that was annoying. Remember that? You were just going about your business, playing well, and suddenly your weapon locks up and you get killed. And that's why I use the personal shield. For my ride ability, I'm still using this, the personal shield, which I think is a must for this class. It's the only way you can get yourself out of trouble if you're in a close range 
1v1 using a sniper, unless you have good aim with hip fire. And the perk I'm using is still expert weapons handling, which increases your success cooling duration when using a weapon. It basically allows you to fire off more shots. However, you could also use the survivalist perk, which makes your health regenerate faster. These are the two I'd recommend. So with all that said, have I changed my opinion on which is the best sniper in the game? Well, yes and no. The A280 CFE is no doubt the most useful, well-rounded weapon in the specialist class and plays well at close, mid and long range. It plays even, but only with the burst fire mode. And in my opinion, this disqualifies it as a sniper. It feels more like a long range assault rifle, which is why I have to conclude that the NT242 is still the most powerful actual sniper in the game. It deals heavy damage at long range with no drop off, is capable of one shot killing enemies with a headshot or two shots in the chest. And although it can be difficult to use in Battlefront 2 due to lots of the maps mid to close range combat design, it still feels the most like a big heavy 50 cal sniper. So which sniper is your favorite in Battlefront 2? And do you think the A280 CFE still qualifies as a sniper with burst fire? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to go back and check out my other in-depth looks at the NT242 and Cycle Rifle, I'll leave them here so you can click on them very easily. You just tap the screen or click with your mouse. And I'd love it if you came and followed me on Instagram, Twitter, and Discord. Come reply to a tweet, leave a comment, anything. Tell me your thoughts about Battlefront 2 snipers. There's links to those in the description. Thanks for watching this. My name's Andrew. I'll catch you soon. <laughs> Stay bombastic.